Hello, everybody. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm here with the fantastic Demis Rosley. Hey, Demis, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. I've literally <laughs> never done a reel or created a TikTok video before. Don't worry, I will not be dancing today. Um, so I'm going to be asking Demis uh, lots we're, of questions. We're both not going to be dancing today. So <laughs> There's it's good. no dancing. No <laughs> dancing, I promise. No one wants to see that. Even my kid looks at me like, you can't really dance. Uh, there's, there's no rhythm happening over here. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make three reels today. Um, the first one is like, and we, we can't really hear the audio, I think, because of copyright music issues. But yeah. you can kind of, you can see these reels on my Instagram or, or TikTok. It's the same. Um, and this one, the first one is, it starts off with like a flashing image that goes black and then another image and then goes black and then another image that goes black. And then it like uh, fast pace videos of whatever you want, I guess. Right. Um, so I've used it to show my past travels. Um, so this first one is showing New York. Um, and then this next one's showing Japan. Um, and yeah, I, I like making this because it reminded me of my memories of traveling and it was yeah. fun. There was a thing where the CEO of Instagram was saying how like Instagram's transitioning to a, you know, it's not a photo sharing app anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. It so, still will so be a photo sharing. It's probably like favoring video right now. Yeah, I think, and I think it is. Reels in particular. Um, and like, I'm not saying you should just be posting reels nonstop and creating things that are not your brand, but you yeah. should you know, try, yeah, if you want to dive into it, you should try to make stuff that's, you know, suited to you and what you like and what you enjoy and showcases your talents. Mm. Um, so potentially you could do, if you're a photographer, you could show like before and after of your edits or like you could show the behind the scenes of a photo shoot, for example. So like there's lots of different things that you could do to, to still stay within the realm of yourself. Mm. Um, or if you want to branch out and do something new, that's completely fine as well. As long as you're having fun and enjoying it, that's that's fine. Yeah, nice. Um, so yeah, and then I've just, since Reels came out, I've sort of tried to keep it consistent. And so I tried to post photos and Reels and try to just mix it up and don't just go all out Reels, all out photos. Just, just trying to see what I can do and make. Mm. Um, so at the moment, I'm posting maybe two or three photos photo posts a week and two or three reels a week. So just trying to keep that balance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it important to be consistent? Like, is that like a really important thing do you think? Or is it just for like for your I audience or is that just more, good for you? I think it's good for me to be consistent, but I think it's good for the audience if you're active. So yeah. it doesn't have to be consistent, but you just have, you should be active and, and like posting stories and posting, like showing the audience that you you're there. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're still creating things. You're still making things. You, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, then the next one I want to show today is this behind like the, the before and after ones, which I edited the photos on Tuesday. Yeah. So if you haven't so seen that familiar. one, yeah. the link is on YouTube. If you want to watch the past episode. Um, and so this one we're going to be doing. And then the last one is this rotating one where it's sort of an interactive one where it teaches like how to rotate a, uh, like a still video and you can rotate yeah. it in the edit. Like I'm not actually rotating it while I'm there. Yeah, cool. So you've edited it in post to, to have that countdown and have the, the rotation thing. And so the idea is that you're kind of holding your phone and you kind of turn it with the... Oops, yes, away. exactly, it with exactly. The, yeah. Making it like an interactive thing for your audience to, to, to do with, with, with you. Yeah. Um, so all the text and stuff, so like this, rotate your phone 360 and to the left in 321, that's all done in the apps. Right. Um, but all the other stuff, like the video content is all done on Adobe Premiere Pro for me. Cool. Um, and the reason I do that is because I feel like if you put in the text and, and all the stuff that looks like a reel and looks like a TikTok, it, it feels more genuine to your audience right like it doesn't look like you've overproduced it it's just like you know you just put in the text there it's the a font everyone recognizes mm. um and it's i feel like it's better and more um integrated within the app mm. um okay so let's just get started so i'm in premiere pro at the moment right As i'm just go. gonna call this name real tiktok or something cool so it's a whole new project file 
Yeah, let's just start a, start with a whole new project file. So what I usually do to start off with is to find a song first um, or find a, a, I think the song usually generates the idea for me, mm-hmm. um, usually, most of the time. And so what I like to do to get the song onto Premiere Pro is I usually screen record the app. So it would be either TikTok or Reel. And I would just go on my phone, screen record, make sure that it's recording the audio of your phone, not the audio of the mic. Right. Um, And then you screen record it. Once you have that file in your gallery, I send it to my computer via Dropbox. Right. So that's sort of the process that I do to get the music onto um, the computer and onto Premiere Pro. And the reason why I don't edit on the apps is because it can be a bit cumbersome, like just everything's so small on a phone. Yeah. Um, there's you can't really like pinpoint exactly where you want your cuts. Right. Um, that kind of stuff. And on the computer, you can also see like the sound waves. So like if you're trying to time something to a beat, um, it works really well on mm. on a computer. In these, I've already sh- uh, separated the three folders. So the first one is gonna be it's called New York. Um, it's I've just got this screen recording to begin with. Um, so I'm just going to drag that in to Premiere Pro and drag it onto the timeline. Mm-hmm. And so it's showing this screen here. I'm just going to go fit to show the full thing. Um, I don't need the actual screen recording, so I'm going to unlink it to the audio and then just delete it. So now you have this audio file, um, which is here. Um, and this is like the song that you've heard on TikTok and you're scrolling and you're like, cool, I, I think I'm going to make something out of this. I like this. And this is exactly. how you put it into to Premiere. Cool. Exactly. Um, so you can scrub through it and listen to it as well. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is change the sequence settings to the right dimension. So right now my phone, my phone is spitting out a 1080 by 2400 file and at the 15.57 frame rate. Um, but usually I either go with 23.976 or even 30 or 25, but I think best for TikTok and Reels is 30. I think that's just what the native uh, frame rate is. Right. So I usually go with 30 and then I go 1080 by 1920, which is the file size for for TikToks and Reels. Um, so now we have the files and I guess the first thing to do is just, so I've already numbered all this, so it's kind of making it easier for myself. Um, and a good thing for people making reels on TikTok is to have your files organized as well. Um, so when I was making this, I was just scrolling through, I was just like going through my gallery and trying to find like all the videos I've taken in New York and I just like dumped them in Dropbox. Um, and then I just went through one by one to find which one kind of suits it best. And are they really long videos? Like are you just yeah, dumping yeah, yeah. in like super long videos? Yeah. Yeah. So these are like hundred megabyte files, right. They're like at least maybe 30 second, 40 second videos, some of them. Um, so if I just drag the first one um, into Premiere Pro, uh, it's like I recorded at 4K, so it's bigger than what it is. Mm. Um, and so you can just scale it down 50% to make it the right size for 1080 by 1920. Yeah, so that's like your HD kind yeah. of size. Yeah. And then you just kind of just scrub until you find the point where you want your video to be. So for me, I think that's a good starting point. I might zoom in a bit to, to get it a little bit better, but um, to cut the video, I just do control or command K and it literally cuts it and then I just delete the front bit. So now it's just a little short clip. Um, and then I'm also gonna do the same thing with the song. The song doesn't start from the beginning. So I'm gonna find a point where it's actually the start of the video. Yeah. Um, I think it's here. So I'm just gonna again, control K cut that and then you can select the space that it's left and then press delete and it'll jump to the beginning oh that's a good one i didn't know about that one um yeah it's it's a it's a good one because then if you if you make lots of cuts in your videos and lots of spaces you just press the, you just click the space and then it just jumps to the previous video nice. so it just clicks back um so i'm gonna also either mute this button here is to mute this track. So I don't want to hear the video, the audio of the video. So either mute it or delete the actual audio track. So I can just do either. So I'm going to unlink it and then delete it. Um, And then because you can see here the sound waves, you can see the start point and the end point. 
um, I'm just gonna like make this end at this point. Um, so that's this is the point where the song sort of ends, and you want that black screen. So you want to com control or command K again, and then click the back side of it, and then delete it. So what's the deal with the black screen? I don't know. It was just like it's a, it's a trend I saw on TikTok, right? Yeah. So I was like, I forgot what video was the first one I saw of this one. Yeah. Um, but the song goes like da da, and then it stops. Right. And then it goes da da, like, and then it just kind of. I think it captures your attention a little bit because it's like, why is my screen going black? Yeah. Um, and that's why it's sort of a little bit more engaging. So yeah, so that's sort of the beginning of the video. So I'm literally just picking a part where I I like it and then I... Uh, and it's literally just like that and it goes black. Right, so it's very quick. Yeah. Um, and then basically it's just the same thing over and over again until you fill up the whole song. <laughs> And then you can see also, right, like once you get to the, this point, you can see where the beat cuts as well. So every little spike up here mm. is where a beat you should put in a new video. Right. So that's really handy because like you can't see that on a phone when you're editing. So on Link, I'm going to get, this is the Dumbo in Brooklyn. So I'm going to get the part where I'm zooming in. So like that. Hardest part about getting that shot is not getting other photographers yeah, shot, we right? <laughs> we went like at like 6 a.m. or something to this oh, wow. spot. But yeah, so that's sort of the process that I go through to create a reel. Um, but yeah, so it's like that, 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 and it's very fast paced. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of the whole idea behind it. I usually, again, cut it at about 15 to 20 seconds. So like if the song keeps going all the way to like 30, 40 seconds, um, like the general rule of thumb for like short style videos, unless it's like a tutorial style or like some sort of mm. thing where you're telling a story where it's like, it needs longer. Um, yeah. even if it's a story, like you want it to be so fast paced that like it engages the audience really quickly. Mm. Um, I usually cut out about 15, 20 seconds. So here I would just drag it back to 15, 20 seconds. And then, yeah, once it's all filled up to the end, uh, the result. It's like, a, this is what I prepared earlier kind of thing. So the yeah. results should look like the video I posted on my Instagram last night. Which is what this is. Yeah, cool. And do you just like export it as, like, what, yeah. what do you export it as? You don't have to so export it now. I can it show you. Now. So I once I, once it's all filled up, I go file, um, export, and then media. And once this menu appears, I go H.264, match source, high bit rate. Um, I usually just keep it as is, and then I just go render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality, and then I export. Yeah, and That's cool. pretty much it. Like nothing too fancy or anything. Um, you could try to push this like bit rate settings like to two pass or something and increase the target bit rate. But I don't usually do that. Yeah. <laughs> the files get much bigger and like, it's it's on like it's such a fast paced video and it's on an app so it's Instagram's gonna compress it anyways. Yeah. To what it is, so I just leave it as is. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And that's it.